hallelujah all right so let's get into the word of the lord today let's get into the word of the lord today someone say hallelujah Hallelujah. someone say hallelujah Hallelujah. numbers chapter 21 verse 8 i just want to read the principle here and to help all of us address something very powerful numbers chapter 21 verse 28 look your neighbor and say that you're looking so good put your hands around them and give them a big hug give them a big hug even if it's a man give him a big hug don't mind them give him a big hug we give a big hug give a big hug we give a big hug yeah i've always told you it can be challenging out there but it should be love in here it can be challenged. It should be what? Love in here. Amen. Numbers chapter 21, verse 8. Not verse 28, verse 8. Numbers chapter 21, verse 8. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make a fairy serpent. Make, when it says make a fairy serpent, it means that make, um, what do you call it? Build an image like do a sculpture do a sculpture of an image that is like a serpent like a serpent is a snake make a brazen image of a snake and look what it says and set it upon the pole and look at what it says very powerful and it shall come to pass that everyone that a new snake has beaten so the background of this story was that Ephraim went of course and snakes began to bite them and they were dying snakes began to bite them as they were dying second they were divine so God told them that everyone that looks upon, it says, uh, anyone that is beaten, if they are beaten and they look upon the brazen serpent, the brazen serpent is, you will see it in hospitals. Do you see that sign of a serpent? That's exactly what it looks like. It says, put that image there. It says, everyone that is beaten that looks on the image will live. And this is very instructive in this time. Why is it very instructive? Everyone under the sound of my voice that you have gone through a season in your life where you lost money, you were beaten. Where you, where you lost a relationship, you were beaten. Where something happened to you and it seemed as if a snake had beaten you. When the Bible says that a snake had beaten them, it was a physical snake. But right now, it's not physical snake that is beating, biting people. It's economic snake, snake serpent. Some people, is an economic serpent that will wipe away their capital. I was listening to a story of a lady that was crying out and she said look at my store and she showed the picture of her store the store was full this time last year he said it's still the same amount of money but it can only fill 25 percent of my store right now and she was shouting that lady was broken down she was devastated he said can you imagine what is going on in my life and this is an example of people that the serpent has beaten they are going to economic hardship there are some people that the pressure of finances has begun to affect their marriage so the bible says that watch what it says he says every time that you have been beaten he said don't look at what beats you don't look at your pain don't talk about it he said look at the brass serpent what does that mean stop talking about what is wrong look at what christ has done stop talking about what is wrong look at so what that means is that so i go into the store again and i see that half of my goods are gone instead of me to sit down and be crying that the serpent has beaten me instead of me to sit down and be looking at the pain the serpent has caused me the first thing i will do is that i will look away from the pain and that's what you have to do instead of you going to twitter and be ranting instead of you going to show me and be crying out there's no help for you in those places they say you should look at the brass and serpent what do you find at the brass and serpent you will look at the lord jesus christ and what he has done in calvary and you will begin to tell yourself that my help coming from the lord who made the heavens and of the earth he will not suffer my foot to be moved he that watches over israel neither slum, neither sleeps nor slumber the lord is my keeper the lord is my strength the lord is my lifter the major problem why people die from the very tough time is that they keep nursing and looking at what beats them the principle is this look at the principle and it shall come to pass that 
everyone that is beaten. So, if you have lost a relationship, maybe you were self breakfast, maybe you were at the divorce, maybe you lost money. He says, everyone that is beaten will not look at the snake that beats them, will not look at the pain that was in that place. He will look upon the serpent and he shall live. The reason why you have not lived and you have not healed is that you are still looking at the pain. You are still saying, my God, look at, look at if you want to have peace, leave the lie alone. I'm telling you, if you want to have peace, leave the lie alone. You know, me, I'm, because I, I train as an accountant, figures come to me naturally. I have the tendency to be checking, checking, checking. One day I was checking, I'm going to say, what do you want you to do? And he's saying this, he says, as long as you're looking at it, you will die. So the people that the serpent bites and they held their leg and say, hey, 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 see what the serpent bite me? Hey, 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 they died. The people that the serpent beat and they chose to look at the brazen serpent, they lived. What does that mean? You will choose to stop looking at your account. Are you hearing me? You will choose to stop looking at the price. You will look into Calvary and you will say to yourself, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leadeth me beside still water. Are you here? The danger is that you keep looking. You keep looking. You keep looking. He said, hey, it has, it's one seven now. Hey, it's one eight now. Hey, rice is 70,000 now. Hey, he says you stop looking. You look up to the cross. The principle is this. Whatever you don't want, you don't watch. Why? Whatever you watch, you become. Whatever you don't want, you don't watch. Whatever you watch, you become. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. And that's why when there are frustrations, you know, times and times, I mean, prices are going high. The other day I was reading in the newspaper, someone was going on the road and just collapsed. And when things like that happen, the question you're asking yourself is this. They are frustrating season we are in. How do I respond? It's a very simple thing. The first thing I don't watch, I look into it. So I understand that things are happening, but it's a deliberate discipline that I will not talk negatively. I will not watch these things. I will say something else. You know what I'm saying? So when people are frustrated, they begin to take their frustration on those that are close to them. People just go online in physical relationships, physical space. They start attacking people in physical space. Start talking. The wife is fighting the husband. The husband is fighting the wife. And the reason why is that it's not about the marriage. They're just personally frustrated. Then the girlfriend goes, what did I do to you? Why are you turning your anger on me? He said, why would I turn your anger on me? Can't you say everything has gone up? And the guy said, am I the one that made everything go up? Look at the story of Cain in the Bible. The Bible says of Cain, very powerful story but of Cain. The Bible says Cain was frustrated that his offering was not accepted. What did Cain do? He took it and killed Abel. Be careful lest frustration make you kill the good things in your life. And there are people here, in a moment of frustration, they ruined an essential relationship. Because they responded to someone that was kind to them, not based on what they've done because of their state of frustration. There are people in the moment of frustration destroy their marriages. Look at Cain. What happened? Let's read that story. Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. Glory to God. Because when you're frustrated, the temptation is there to take it out on somebody that is not connected to what has happened. But the wisdom is to learn that instead of me to take my frustration out on someone that is not connected to this. I would rather convert my frustration to energy to achieve my goals. And that's where the wisdom is. Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. The Bible says the press of time. Can you give me the message translation please? Genesis chapter 4 verse 3. And time passed and Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the produce of his farm. 
Abel also brought an offering, but from the firstborn animals of his herds, choice cuts of meat, and God liked Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering did not get an approval, and Cain lost his temper. Cain was clearly frustrated. He was frustrated, and this is what, let, let me just explain here. What, oh wow, will you take it? Some of you, you never had a problem with the fact that you didn't have a car until your best friend bought a car. You never had a problem you're not married until your sister got married. If God had refused a best offering, Cain would have had no problem. But at least nobody's offering was accepted. And let me tell you something. Will you receive this? Pay attention to this. The way God works, God allows someone to go fast. You know why he does that? So that you that are sleeping, you wake up. It's the principle of spiritual provocation. He will use it to provoke you. But if you don't understand what should provoke you, that begins to depress you. And this is how you respond to it. When someone goes far, pa! You say, thank you, Lord. I see what you are telling me. The reason why is that what God does for one shows what's available for other people. So there's no reason to be depressed or be envious. It's the same God that is rich unto all. So if God did it for him, he would do my own. So I go into prayer and say, Lord, the same way you did it for him, do my own. That was why the angel told Mary, go and see Elizabeth. Why? If the God could do it for Elizabeth, who people say was barren, and Elizabeth carries a child, the same God will do your own also. But unfortunately, what should provoke your faith is not depressing you. Because you don't understand how spiritual things work. So your friend is wedding and you enter into a depression. I say, ah, so you have left me. Because in your mind, as she has gone, it's not available to you. That thinking is scarcity. The real thinking of the kingdom is this. What God does for one shows what's available to others, not what is cast to everybody. Why did it? So I'm just showing you why Cain lost his temper. So the Bible says, and Cain lost his temper. And when he lost his temper, watch this now. When you are frustrated, there's an option. The natural option is to take your frustration on those you can see. He lost his temper and what? And began to sulk. Please keep going. And went into a sulk. Verse 6. The Bible says in verse 6. Can you keep going, sir? And God spoke to Cain. And watch this now. This is the reason why you must be careful from frustration. He said, why these tantrums? Why the sulking? If you do well, won't you be accepted? But if you don't do well, sin is lying in wait for you, ready to pounce on you. It's out to get you. You have got to master it. What God is saying is that your frustration can lead you to a higher level of performance. But if you don't understand and you don't master your frustration, your frustration will destroy you. For Cain, Cain could not master his frustration. You know what happened to him? Cain, his frustration moved him to kill Abel. Cain became a worse man because of that frustration. What am I saying to you? Look at the story of Anna. Anna was also frustrated. Are you listening to this? Anna was also frustrated. How was Anna frustrated? She went and said, I have no child. I have no child. I have no child. What was she taking her frustration on? She was taking her frustration on her husband. You know what I'm saying this to you? When you're frustrated, the very relationships that come under pressure are those that love you. And it's unfortunate because it's the people that love you that you punish for their love for you because you're frustrated. So you see, you see, you see someone, you see a boss that is frustrated, it takes it out on, on the very committed staff in the office. You will see a man that is frustrated, is the wife that loves him, it will take out that frustration on him. So the same thing with Anna. When Anna was frustrated, she went to meet her husband. She was one that was barren. At least the two of them were barren. The Bible says she held her husband and said, give me a child and give me a child and give me a child. She was transferring the frustration to him. And all of a sudden, the man said to him, he said, calm down. He said, I'm not God to make children. Then wisdom came to her that when I'm frustrated, 
I don't put pressure and frustrate those that love me. I direct my frustration to a source of solution. So she directed her frustration to a solution. Where was it? Was in the temple. She went to the temple. What I'm saying to you is this instead of directing your frustrations to other people that love you but cannot change your situation, direct your frustration to find solutions. Are you here? As she went into the temple, the priest spoke, and that was it. Sometimes, what will make you pray more is your frustration. Sometimes, what will make you make changes is your frustration. And sometimes, you are frustrated because a new path is about to open for you. Glory to God. I've had to make, I will tell you what has happened in my life. As a pastor, there are seasons you have to make certain changes. But I found that, that I find it difficult to make those changes. You know what God happened, that allows to happen to me? I will now go through a season where I'm deeply frustrated. Then, I will be compelled by myself to make those changes. Some of you, the reason why the frustration is there is because there are changes you have to make that if you are not frustrated, you will not make it. As a matter of fact, everyone that succeed, ask them the question. They were very frustrated and their frustration turned to energy for success. True or false? That's it. What you should be asking yourself right now is this. How do I convert my frustration into energy for success? You need frustration, no? But you need to learn how to convert your frustration into energy. There are some times, see, some things will not open up. I was talking to, I was reading the story of a guy that developed an app where you can send money, you know, naira, dollar, that kind of thing. I said, how did this happen? He said, it was frustration. He said, it was not as if I saw a need. I just noticed that I could not send money to my parents back home in Africa. I tried and it was extremely difficult. And it occurred to me that I'm an IT person. I can create an app that can open this up. He said, I created it. He said, the way this thing turned to a multi-millionaire business in my hand, multi-million dollar business in my hand, I don't understand. Because it was not as if it was strategic. It was just frustration that turned to solution. If you want to be honest with yourself, there are some breakthroughs you have that it was not because you planned it, it was frustration that turned it there. And that's why sometimes when you understand frustration, you embrace it, but you don't allow it to overwhelm you. You don't turn into people that love you. You rechannel the frustration to some, something else. So now there's frustration going on. What are you going to channel this frustration to? Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. The key thing is this. If you choose to maintain your peace in frustration and challenge it, you will see a way out. You know, let me say this quickly here. Very powerful. I was reading this, watching this story about a king. This king had 10 wild dogs. Very wild dogs. Very wild dogs. And when his servants make a mistake, the king will feed his servants to the dogs. He was a very horrible guy. So one time, this king's servant made a mistake. And, but he was an old servant. So the king now said, feed him to the dogs. The servant said, King, I have saved you for 10 years. I made one mistake. And you asked him to feed me to the dogs. The king said, Hey, feed him to the dogs. Hey, take him away. Feed him to the dogs. He said, okay, I agree that you feed him to the dogs. But give me 10 days. And this is how you turn frustration into wisdom. He said, give me 10 days. The king said, okay, that's fine. Give him 10 days. The day they said so, the man went to meet the keeper of the dogs and said to him, this thing is a very stressful job. I want to spend my last 10 days feeding the dogs, caring for them, loving them, and bathing them. So the man went to the dogs. He said, that's good. You'll leave my responsibility. He was feeding the dogs, caring for them, loving them. On the 10th day, it was up. The king says, they should take the man and feed to the dogs. Normally, when they take the man and feed to the dogs, the dog will pounce and injure and crush their bones. So when they took this man and fed to the dogs, the dogs jumped on him, licking his face, licking his feet, licking everything. They didn't touch him. The king said, what happened to my dogs? He looked at the king. He said, I served you for 10 years. One mistake, you say, kill him. He said, I only stand for 10 days. See where I am. I become their friends. He learned how to turn his frustration into what? Solutions. 
the question is this on one side is frustration on the other side is opportunity you need the wisdom of god on how to flip it around and turn the frustration into opportunities if that man was complaining he would have died if that man was chatting he would have died the reason he stayed alive was because he learned the principle what's the principle don't focus on the frustration focus on the opportunities in the frustration he saw it what can you see and you must be careful lest your frustration blind you to see the opportunities someone say hallelujah someone say hallelujah psalm 78 verse 41 oh glory to god someone say there are opportunities in my frustrations are, are they there there are opportunities in my frustration psalm 78 verse 41 i don't know the person at the back the person keeps putting up wrong verses psalm 78 verse 41 see what the bible says and this is the power of goal setting because that's what we're focusing on this month it said yes they turned their back and tempted the lord and limited the holy one of israel why is it important to have goals one of the reasons why it's important to have goals is this because goals will limit or release god's power in your life goals will either limit or release god's power in your life god's power will not work beyond the goals that you have god's power will not work beyond the goals that you have in your life very powerful concept did you notice the woman that had the issue of blood everybody was touching jesus christ nobody got healed the only person that got healed was the one that touched him with a goal that said that if i may touch the helm of his garment i shall be made whole if your goal if if she, every other person that touched him without a goal was not healed the only person that got healed was the one that touched him with a goal the question is this are you touching just with a goal goals have the capacity to limit or to amplify what god can do in your life and that's why if you know if all you're praying for is ten thousand god's power will supply it but the same part that supplies ten thousand supplies ten billion because it's not about the need it's about your goals determine how much god can do in your life listen to me give god work to do see what the bible says here the bible says and they limited that means that god could do more than what they asked for but the limit of their goal became the personal goal and if you are living a goalless life you are living a life that cannot have power because there will be nothing the power of god be channeled towards in your life it's so powerful so why, why must i have a goal the reason i must have the goal is this number one because goals limit or release god's power in my life so the reason why i believe god for big things is because i want to see big power released i want to see some things released so if you want to see some big things released in your life you need big power so why don't people set goals and i will explain this to you quickly very powerful when you have gone through several attack and disappointment if you are not careful you will begin to develop what i call victim mentality victim mentality is the mentality that you are not in control of your future that life happens against you and not for you that you are a victim of your destiny and not an architect of your destiny that's victim mentality and that's why people don't set goals people just feel as if well there's nothing i can do to influence my future and that singular thinking cripples people but the truth is this you are not a victim of your destiny you are the architect of your destiny someone say i'm not a victim of my destiny i'm the architect of my destiny powerful so what happens to you is this and this is how people lose their vision this wait, 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 where's my please can you help me these are people lose their vision i want to show you how they lose their vision these are people become develop victim mentality these are the victim mentality everyone watch this now let, let me pull this here everyone is empty 
then everyone gets vision so this is you and you get vision and that's it you get vision that's great thank you for getting vision <laughs> so let me explain what vision is <laughs> praise god i want to tell you what vision is this is what vision is you're young you say um what do you plan for the future ah, i'll finish university at 24 i'll do nyc at 25 you know, I do finish at 24, then everyone's at 25. By 25, I'll get a job at 26. I'll buy my first car at 27. You know, then 28, I'll just settle down and get married. How many of you had that kind of plan? Awesome. Oh, wow. That's the kind of, you had that kind of plan. Right? <laughs> the first problem was the first graduate. <laughs> hey, did you go to some university where some courses hold people down? If you studied engineering, where I st where, where, where in my school, it's called EEG. EEG will just hold you down. If you studied accounting, it was called ACC, will hold you down. So all of a sudden, what was meant to finish out? It was two things. It was the courses and ASU strike. Then all of a sudden, you find that 24 turns to 27. 24 turns to 26. Have you noticed that? That's it. That's it. Then you think that once I finish, ah, after finish at 26, thank God, oh, ah, straight to NYC. And I say, your name is on the list. <laughs> and I say, Senate has not sent the list. Have you heard that before? Senate has not sent it. He said, NYC said, they've sent it, but we didn't receive it. And I say, ah, how did Senate send it? They didn't get it. Say, your name is not missing in transition. And I say, excuse me, it's just a name. Then before you know it, NYC takes two years. And this is what happens to vision. What, what happens to vision? All the vision of at 24, I'll graduate. At 25, I'll do this. When reality sets in, vision will begin to leak. Vision will what? Begin to leak. Bleak. This is your vision leaking, though. Know? <laughs> at 27, I'll buy a car. You know, this and this and this. You know, when I start the company, the first one year will not make money. We'll just try because our first year will make 10 million. But by the second until they have entered the market properly, we'll just make 100 million. What, what happens is, is what, what, what happens? This is the vision. Then vision begins to watch, watch it down. Vision is leaking. Then after some time, you become vision empty. Not because you didn't have vision before, but because reality has begun to leak your vision. Let's talk about this here. Many of you, January 2nd, you had plans. You said, yeah, yeah, by February, pa, 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 pa. as soon as dollar slapped you, <laughs> you said, mm. you didn't know when you forgot that you had vision. All of a sudden, vision begins to leak. You even forgot that you dreamt some dreams in January. Yet, we're just six weeks away from January 1st. And the reason that vision is leaking. Vision, these are vision and goals leak. This is not what you turn for yourself. Vision is leaking. And guess what? As vision is leaking, after some time, this whole vision drains out. When God wants to help you, when your vision is leaking is this. You know what it will do? It will give you a revelation. I want you to pay attention. It will give you... God cannot stop your vision from leaking. It cannot stop all these things from happening to you. What God will do is that it will give you a revelation that will top up your vision so that you are back to where you were initially the reason why you are frustrated is this your vision is leaking but you don't have top up time to top up revelation the same thing happened to abraham watch abraham abraham god had told abraham you will have a child when abraham got to 90 abraham said god don't worry about the child make my servant the heir of my house god said abraham come out look into the skies begin to count them what did god do god gave him a vision top up you know what the reason why you are frustrated you are angry you are depressed is because you need a vision top up that comes as a result of revelation what you need right now is a vision top up yeah. are you here somebody what you need is what a vision top up ah this was you that told yourself, ah, my marriage, my husband will do this to me, my husband will do that to me. You know, I just think about it. Think about your marriage. <laughs> you know, Pastor, mm -hmm. 
you the kind of person I am, I like love. I'm telling you, I like love. And so the kind of man I'm going to marry, in fact, I can, I can see him because there are so many of them, but I know, I know that I have to choose, but I will just choose carefully. I will not waste his time. It will touch me for three months. You know, and you're saying all these wonderful things. Then that guy will set me breakfast in bed. He will carry me and swing me like this and swing me like this. In fact, we'll be getting monthly allowee as girlfriend allowance. You know, girlfriend allowance. I'll be getting girlfriend allowance. You know, you know, I'll, I'll get phone allowance. I'll get all this allowance and all of those kind of things. <laughs> then at 34, you're not married. And I say, Lord, give me your man. Vision, all of a sudden, vision has what lit. You know, you know, when you just say business, you're like, um, they were like, ah, why not take this business? No, no, I can't take that kind of business. Ah, five million, ten million, no, no, no. The, I'm positioning myself for high net worth. You know, high net worth, high uh, clients that hundred million, two hundred million. The first year, the second year, because you are projected by the first year, we'll do ten million. Second year, we're just starting ten million. Second year, third year, hundred million. At least we'll have eight staff. But by the fifth year, you find out that you are the only staff. Then the kind of you now find out that don't worry, sir. You now say, don't worry about high network. Any network is okay. He said, Do you do business of 200,000? He said, I do, just bring it. You know, and the reason why is that vision has begun to leak. And many of you, what has happened to you is that vision has leaked. And God is saying to you, This is the time for top up. Glory to God. Who knows what I'm talking about here? What makes vision leak? Reality of life. Reality of life. Disappointment, setbacks, policies, inflation, dollar, capital, loan, repayment, fights, trauma. A lot of things make vision leak. But what I'm saying to you is this. When your vision is leaking, the solution, what you need is top up for your vision. Praise God. What you need is what? Top up for your vision. So, Abraham said to God, God, don't worry about all these things I was asking for. See my servant. Me, I was believing, gra, gra, gra. If I have a son, God, forget son. I have servants. And this is the victim mentality. Victim mentality when you have victim mentality, you don't see the possibility of success and breakthroughs again. So you begin to settle. Abraham said, don't worry, sir. This is my servant. Just make him, bless him as the heir of my family. And God says, wow. Abraham is having a problem. His vision has leaked. God says, Abraham, come out of your house. He says, lift up your eyes. Count the stars. You know I'm saying this to you? Because of the things that are going on in the economy, a lot of people are developing victim mentality. You are all of a sudden becoming hopeless. Many of you don't trade in dollar, but the way the dollar has affected your mind, I don't understand. Prices are high. Food is costly. I understand that one fundamentally. And I agree with you. But some of you, it's just, you just become hopeless. They say, how far would this say dollar is high? Some of you, I'm telling you, in fact, when I said when people are frustrated, they begin to frustrate people. I have seen people that increase their product, that their product has nothing to do with dollar. And human beings begin to terrorize human beings. Government has its own problem, but what we are doing against each other is wickedness. Ah! What do you call that? What? sometimes I wonder that the way Gary went up you wonder that do we import Gary at all? I know transportation is a bit expensive but transportation is not 100% now you ask people to come and to come and speak, speak, you know speaking speaking the person said, oh no my fees has changed because of the dollar you say, excuse me sir you look at him, look at him. He says, Sir, you're not, we're not importing you, you're local. So, how does it, it change because of dollar? Because if we're not careful, we keep pointing at other people, we don't point at ourselves. That sometimes, because of frustration, we frustrate other people also. And when there's frustration, what we need is love. Yeah. 
He said, come and speak, speak, speak. He said, dollar has gone up. When dollar was low, how did it affect you? Does saliva work on dollar? Glory to God. And I'm saying seeds because eventually we develop a victim mentality. And we begin to victimize ourselves and victimize other people. But meanwhile, in reality, what we need is a vision top up. You go, you go to a woman to make your hair. He said, my price has doubled. He said, dollar. You say, ma, I understand the wig is expensive, but the making of the hair, how did it touch dollar? Is your hand dollarized? Is, it, is your hand dollarized? I understand the wig has gone up in price because of exchange rates, but what about your hand? What? What is it? All back is now, is now, is now two k. What? No attachment, different. Is the weaving I'm talking about? Oh, four k. The hand of the hairdresser is now more expensive. Praise God. Uh, God will help us. Listen, if everybody is getting hopeless around you, know that their vision tank is empty. It's time for what a refill. Before you start saying that things are not working, everything has broken down, just sit down. It's time for a refill. And that's, let me tell you something. This is why it's important you come to church regularly. You know why? When your oil is low, they can top up. But when the oil gets to a place that is finished and the engine knocks, top up does not work again. They have to change engine. Before your engine knock, come. Because it's when your engine knock, you'll not be looking for tramadol. And what again? Eh? And molly. And holy. And, and, and the reason why is that because now you are broken now you need chemical to sustain your emotion before you knock go for god get revelation look at him and say before you knock get revelation some of your friends are home now they've knocked please next sunday bring them for surgical operation because we need to change their engine praise god because you ask people why people use drugs one of the key reasons why people use drugs is this they want an emotional state that they cannot that they want an emotional change that they are not getting so they go for drugs to produce that the problem with drugs is this it produces you that change but gets you addicted to it and those changes are short term with long term consequences e.g. poverty I know people that have cocaine that cannot afford cocaine. How can you get hooked on what you cannot be hooked on? Praise God. Same thing with gambling. Same thing with gambling. Listen to me. The only problem I have with gambling is this. You are going to make a habit of a bad decision and a bad process. So even if you win in gambling or lose in gambling, the thing is that in life, you will start thinking life is a gamble. Instead of you to have an intentional way to make things happen, you'll be thinking of what as a gambling process. Because it's not just something you do. It becomes an habitual way of thinking and acting. So when you get to relationship, you gamble. When you get to work, you gamble. You don't believe in preparation, input and output because you have made a habit of gambling. Ultimately, that, gambling, that habit ruins and reordains your life until it ruins it. If gambling works, ask yourself one question. How many people are on Forbes list and their source of wealth was gambling? The only people on Forbes list that their source of wealth was gambling are those that own the gambling machine and those that own the casinos. There's nobody that is gambling that his name is there. People that own the casinos, their names are there. The business of gambling is not in the gambling, it's in owning the casino. Ask about Jehovah. Shall we pray?